clay is the word and clay is the flesh. Where potato gatherers like mechanized scarecrows move along the side fall of the hill, Maguire and his men. If we watch them an hour, is there anything we can prove of life as it is broken backed over the book of death? Here crows gabble over worms and frogs, and the gulls, like old newspapers, are blown clear of the hedges, luckily. Is there some light of imagination in these wet clods, or why do we stand here shivering? Which of these men loved the light and the queen too long virgin? Yesterday was summer. Who was it promised marriage to himself before apples were hung from the ceilings for Halloween? We will wait and watch the tragedy to the last curtain, to the last soul passively like a bag of wet clay rolls down the side of the hill, diverted by the angles where the plough mist or a spade stands straightening his way. A dog lying on a torn jacket under a heeled-up cart, a horse nosing along the posied headland, trailing a rusty plough, three heads hanging between wide-apart legs, October playing a symphony on a slack-wire palling. Maguire watches the drills flattened out and the flints that lit a candle for him on a June altar flameless. The drills slipped by, and the days slipped by, and he trembled his head away and ran free from the world's halter, and thought himself wiser than any man in the townland, where he laughed over pints of porter, of how he came free from every net spread in the gaps of experience. He shook a knowing head, and pretending to his soul that children are tedious in hurrying fields of April, where men are spanging across wide furrows lost in the passion that never needs a wife. The pricks that pricked were the pointed pins of harrows. Children screamed so loud that the crows could bring the seed of an acre away with crow rude jeers. Patrick Maguire. He called his dog and he flung a stone in the air and hallooed the birds away that were the birds of the ears. Turn over the weedy clods and tease out the tangled skines. What is he looking for there? He thinks it is a potato, but we know better than his mud-gloved fingers probe in this insensitive hair. Move forward the basket and balance it steady in this hollow. Pull down the shafts of that cart, Joe, and straddle the horse, Maguire calls. The wind's over Brannigan's. Now that means rain. Grape up some withered stalks and see that no potato falls over the tailboard going down the ruckety pass, and that's a job we'll have to do in December. Gravel it and build a curb on the bog side. Is that Cassidy's ass out in my clover? Curse, oh God! Where is that dog? Never where he's wanted. McGuire grunts and spits through a clay-wattled mustache and stares about him from the height. His dream changes again like the cloud-swung wind, and he is not so sure if his mother was right when she praised the man who made a field his bride. Watch him, watch him, that man on the hill whose spirit is a wet sack flapping about the knees of time. He lives that his little fields may stay fertile when his own body is spread in the bottom of a ditch under two coulters crossed in Christ's name. He was suspicious in his youth as a rat near strange bread. When girls laughed, when they screamed, he knew that meant the cries of fillies in season. He could not walk the easy road to destiny. He dreamt the innocence of young brambles to hooked treachery. Oh, the grip! Oh, the grip of irregular fields! No man escapes. It could not be that back of the hills love was free and ditches straight. No monster hand lifted up children and put down apes as here. Oh, God, if I had been wiser. That was his sigh like the brown breeze in the thistles. He looks towards his house and haggard. Oh, God, if I had been wiser. But now a crumpled leaf from the white thorn bushes dart like a frightened robin, 
and the fence shows the green of aftergrass through a little window, and he knows that his own heart is calling his mother a liar. God's truth is life, even the grotesque shapes of his foulest fire. The horse lifts its head and cranes through the winds and stones to lip late passion in the crawling clover. In the gap there's a bush weighted with boulders like morality. The fools of life bleed if they climb over. The wind leans from Brady's, and the colt's foot leaves are holed with rust. Rain fills the cart tracks and the soul plate grows. A yellow sun reflects in Donnermoyne. The poignant light in puddles shaped by hooves. Come with me, imagination, into this iron house, and we will watch from the doorway the years run back, and we will know what a peasant's left hand wrote on the page. Be easy, October. No cackle hen, horse neigh, tree sow, duck quack. <laughs>